too, despite its size. Although the basic hull was the same as the CB-33, the suspension was greatly improved. The L640 had paired road wheels mounted on elliptical girders connected to torsion bars. It had a more powerful Fiat 70 horsepower engine, and though heavier, the tank could still reach a speed of nearly 30 miles per hour and had a range of over 120 miles. A Breda quick-firing 20-millimeter cannon and a coaxial machine gun were finally adopted as armament after a series of gun tests for the new tank. The L-335 was a later version of the earlier L-3 and CV-29 tankettes. Its low silhouette is in direct contrast to the top-heavy L-640. Undergoing Alpine testing, the L-3 carried a Breda 13-millimeter heavy machine gun. This became standard armament for the L-335 after the decision was made to arm the larger L-6s with 20-millimeter cannon. Plans were made to equip a tank destroyer version with a 47-millimeter cannon, but this idea was eventually abandoned. Whatever its shortcomings, the L-335 proved itself more than capable of handling most terrain and weather conditions, even the snow and extreme cold. The tank was exported to many different countries, not only those of the Axis allies, but also to South America and China. In Greece and Yugoslavia, partisans captured L3s and used them against their former owners. The tank's ability to operate in mountainous terrain made them ideal for hit-and-run ambushes against the enemy. But the ability to move over the ground could not make up for the basic lack of firepower and adequate armor protection for the crew. The L3 tanks were never fully capable of taking on even the light tanks of the Allied forces with any hope of winning. The final version of the L3 family of tanks was the L338, which entered service in 1939. The biggest improvement in this vehicle was the suspension. It had large pairs of road wheels instead of the earlier triple bogey assemblies with girder support bar. This gave the tank a much smoother ride and better cross-country performance, which was demonstrated in tests against an earlier model. The new suspension system was also more reliable. One of the biggest problems with L3s in Spain and Ethiopia had been the large number of breakdowns. None of the L3 versions were very effective as tanks and they were used mostly as infantry support and reconnaissance vehicles. Their lack of armor protection made them vulnerable while with the infantry, since even the oldest enemy tank had little trouble disabling them. Their lack of range made the reconnaissance mission questionable at best. Some 2,500 L3s were built, but none really measured up to the enemy forces it had to fight. The best of the Italian tanks were the M1139 and M1340 medium tanks, built by Fiat Ansaldo. These were intended to replace the light tankettes of the L3 family, whose shortcomings had become quickly apparent during combat in the Spanish Civil War. The Caro Amati M1139 first saw action in North Africa in 1940. Although it had some early success, it was no match for the British Matilda tanks. The M1139 weighed just under 11 tons and carried a crew of three. Both the M1139 and the later M1340 had the same type of suspension with four pairs of bogey wheels paired on semi-elliptical springs. The Fiat gasoline engine in the M1130 was only 43 horsepower, which gave the tank a top speed of around 20 miles an hour. It had a range of just over 120 miles. The M1340 had a more powerful 100-horsepower engine, 
but because of an added weight of nearly three tons, the speed was actually decreased to under 20 miles per hour. Range remained the same. The M1139 carried its main armament, a 37 millimeter cannon, mounted in the hull. The cannon and a front machine gun were operated by the gunner, who sat next to the driver. A second machine gun mounted in the turret was fired by the tank commander. Hard lessons in combat showed that the main gun needed to be in the turret where it could traverse freely and provide a wider range of fire. Accordingly, the later M1340 tanks had their 47 millimeter cannon in a bigger turret. A fourth crew member was added, but he was only the gun loader. The tank commander still had to aim and fire the main gun in addition to his other duties. The basic hull and suspension design of both tanks was also used on the Cenevente M41 self-propelled 75 millimeter gun. All three vehicles could ford rivers over three feet deep, climb an obstacle almost three feet high, and cross ditches over six feet wide. Of the 100 or so M1139s built, many were captured during the British offensive in North Africa in the winter of 1940. Many M1139s had to be abandoned and, ironically enough, were recaptured when Rommel's forces renewed their attack the following spring. M1139s also fought in the Italian campaign in East Africa. They captured British Somaliland in 1940, which was their greatest success of the war. But superior Allied forces soon prevailed, and most 1139s were captured or destroyed. Very few were still in service when the end of the war came for the Italians. The German army, influenced by Guderian, gave careful thought to the equipment its panzer divisions needed. They developed a series of half-track vehicles for towing and moving heavy equipment. The combination of tracks and wheels meant the vehicles could move through mud, snow, or sand without getting bogged down like ordinary trucks. The 12-ton Type 8 vehicle was used to tow 150, 170, and 210 millimeter guns for the motorized artillery regiments. Type 8s also did duty as recovery and engineer vehicles. Some were even converted for use as self-propelled guns. The smallest half-track vehicles were the one-ton Type 10s. About 25,000 of these were built. They were used as tow vehicles for the smaller anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns, such as the 20-millimeter Flockverling. Germany's early success in the Russian campaign was largely due to the support by the half-tracks. Their ability to keep up with fast-moving tanks while towing artillery was vital. The standard German 105 millimeter gun and even most heavier weapons could all be towed, which meant they could be delivered where they were needed most. Infantry was still needed sometimes to help keep things moving, especially in the severe Russian winters. the large guns into position was a difficult task. The temperatures of a Russian winter were well below freezing, and the ground was so hard that digging in for the gun's recoil was almost impossible. Artillery support was vital to the tank's advance and to keeping up the momentum of their drive. It was also necessary for defense. Russian counterattacks grew fiercer and more determined as the Panzer divisions approached Moscow, Leningrad, Sevastopol, and finally Stalingrad. Savage tank and artillery duels were fought over the vast plains and forests of the Soviet Union as winter closed in. The Germans had the advantage in leadership and tactics and scored impressive victories at the beginning of their advance. But the Russians had time, weather, and manpower on their side, which ultimately turned the tide against the Germans. The Germans also used fully tracked tank 